we have had a lot of conversation here in the parish this year about our mission statement uh, as part of our ongoing long-term planning process, our parish council discerning our, our, our next cycle of strategic plan and priorities for the next several years. But in the middle of that, there was uh, the fashioning of a new vision statement. And it's really been part of our logo and our branding for the past five years or so that, that, that we identify ourselves as a beacon of faith, worship, and witness. And that really becomes the framework of our uh, current cycle of planning, that, that as a parish, we strive to be a beacon of faith, worship, and witness, a, a diverse community as a beacon of faith, worship, and witness to the grace and mercy of Jesus Christ. The challenge of a mission statement is that it needs to be both descriptive of what is and aspirational about what we strive to be. Uh, and it really puts it out there that we need to live by that as a community. This is what we do, this is what we value, this is what we recognize our call of the gospel uh, to teach and witness to the faith, to be a community that worships and praises God and that witnesses through our charity, through our deeds, through our advocacy, that, that we are witnessing to the mercy and grace of Jesus Christ. Basically, we say this is how we want to be known, and this is the good fruit that we want to bear. And the challenge is we put that out there, and we have to live up to that. That people wouldn't look at the sign or, or look at our website and say, well, if you have to say it, then maybe you're not doing it. That's a danger. That we need to be recognized that we, in fact, do that, and that it is a description of what we do, as opposed to being hollow words that aren't put into practice. We hear this echoed in the scriptures today uh, in, in the first reading from the second book of Kings. It's the rediscovery of the books of the law, of the Torah, in the temple. Uh, and, and it's stated that the people had fallen away from that. And so there's this moment of, of, of a ritual of renewing their commitment to the covenant and the law, the law of Moses. That these can't just be empty words but they have to be put into practice. And this is what Jesus really challenges the people to today, challenges us to do about how we are known by our fruits, by what we bear, by what, we, what, what grows through us, what is evident and visible in us. And so we have no greater example today than Saints Thomas More and John Fisher. You know, the story of a man for all seasons and, and Thomas More's defiance of the king in favor of his faith. And John Fisher, too, in, in recognizing God's law above earthly law. It really came down to the both of them protesting uh, Henry's divorce and subsequent marriage. But it was a bigger picture of putting faith first. Uh, we see that walk a dangerous line for us all the time in, in how it is that we live the faith and our practice of the faith is protected in the law, uh, but at times it's sort of pushed off to the side for us today in our society. And that's a dangerous thing, that, that our right to stand up for our faith isn't just a right, but it's an obligation for us to bear good fruit for the name of Jesus. Uh, and it's, it's a great privilege to do so. And that's what Thomas More saw, that even after he probably witnessed firsthand or close to it because he was the chancellor of the realm, uh, he certainly would have known exactly what was taking place in John Fisher's death. And knowing that kept his heart steadfast because he knew his Lord and his God. He knew his first fidelity was to his Savior. And he allowed that to take root and bear fruit ultimately in his last witness, in his final witness and offering of his life for the name of Jesus. It might not be that radical or extreme for us today, thanks be to God, but may we be known for our love and our devotion because that is what is evident, that is what is seen, because that's the fruit that we bear.